had set to a ship that was in dry dock. Hadn't been commissioned yet. And there were two ensigns that lived aboard ship. The only two people, besides maybe rats, that lived on the ship. He was from West Virginia, and I came up from Alabama. And we lived on that boat. Everyone else lived ashore. Did I remember? You can't just get up and walk off and go to drive down to Washington and get your orders. You have to go get the gunnery officers approval. And they, he was a lieutenant commander. And I had never seen anybody that was that senior. So I'd go up to see this guy and he, he came in and said, talk to me. I said, well, he says, you know, I understand you really understand this missile. I said, well, I'm trying. He said, we well, asked some questions. Said, yeah, was, you got that. He says, and I understand you want to go to flight training. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, you do understand that this weapon we have out here makes aviation obsolete. Yes, sir. Said, well, if aviation is obsolete, why do you want to go to flight training? Still want to go? Yes, sir. And literally, he said, You are the dumbest incident in the United States Navy. He scribbled his signature on it and says, Get out of here. <laughs> At the beginning of all this, NASA didn't exist when we started the space program. And so it had to be created. They did do some high speed aircraft work out in the, out in the desert what now is Edwards Air Force Base, but it was a small program. And so they had to go draw from other sources. And so we brought in, we, the NASA organization brought in people from all services. But uh, the Air Force and Navy made the biggest contributions because of the nature of their business. And uh, so I, it, it the only thing was different was when you got from from the service in uh, NASA was no man wore uniforms. Well, I, I was a little kid. I've been fascinated with airplanes. Well, my dad worked for Eastern Airlines, and he'd take me out to the airport on weekends when he was working. And let me go sit in the airplanes and watch them. And, and I just, I've just been fascinated with airplanes forever. So all I really wanted to do was fly. Along the way, I, I'd seen some things and I didn't know what test pilots did, but I saw some pictures of people back in the 50s that showed them standing around the X-1 rocket plane, the first, first little rocket plane that broke the speed of sound. And I looked at that and I said, God, there's the neatest airplane in the world. And these guys are dressed like real people. Standing around out there playing with it. I don't know what they do or how you get there, but I'd like to do that. I never really dreamed it would come true. So luck has, luck has ways of putting you in places you didn't think you wanted to be, but it turned out it was a really good idea. We don't know where the world's going. Number one, the United States military is a magnificent organization. And, and because of the hardships that they endure, they form an unbeatable team. And the relationships that you form amongst those people will persist your whole life. So we move around to different places, and you, it's fun to go from one base to another where you don't know anybody, and by golly, there's somebody that was shared the same station squadron or something from some time back. And the, the 
camaraderie and, and integrity of the relationships I haven't seen in the civilian world. Mm -hmm. Neil Armstrong said it, I would say the same thing. Those wings of gold mean 